Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I play games, make games, and everything in between. And today, I'm gonna go through my best practices spawning objects in BuildBox 3. When I was first spawning objects, I was super excited because creating a 3D object in a 3D world and having it come shoot at you and you gotta move out of the way, super fun. If you do it wrong, you're just gonna use up all your processing power. Watch this video, get to understand the basics. Go Canada. If you like learning about BuildBox 3 or watching my game dev process, be sure to like and subscribe as I'm putting out content all the time. So here in level 6, we have two balls that shoot out and this is named Sphere D Blue Go. Sphere D Blue Go and this is on the X coordinates. Now here we can see the first thing I have is set to a delay, then the object spawns an object and that object either moved at the speed of 20 or at the speed of 25. After the object is spawned, there's a delay for about 10 seconds, which then removes the object. When the object is created, you want to have time before the next object is created. If there's not time, then this is what you'll get. And obviously, a character can't go through like this. This is horrible on processing speed. A lot of what I do is I'll play with the numbers just so I can visually see what's happening. And I can see that this is no good. It will not create the desired gameplay I'm looking for. And I must keep the delay here. Now, again, I'm not exactly sure how this threshold works. So because there is no documentation, I'm not exactly sure what the threshold means. And one day, supposedly, maybe there will be documentation. So let's go ahead and change this. The first step is to always have a delay timer after the start. Otherwise, the object will just be creating itself indefinitely, and that is not your desired gameplay. You want to have the delay timer between the start and the spawn, giving some time for the object to do whatever it's going to do. And in this case, the object is moving in the Z axis. Next, you want to look at the spawn node. This is super important because you will make this mistake. This spawn node is currently for the ball moving in the Z axis. However, if you're in the game and you just copy the object right over here, here it is right here. And let's say I change this to the Y axis. Now, if I go into this, Set changes to the Y axis. I go into the object itself and I change this from 015Z to 15Y and I change this to 25Y and 0Z. You were not done. Here you need to check the spawn object because this is still set to the original object in which this object was copied from. So you need to go into the object and then select the new object which is sphere deep blue go Y that I just created and here you can even see you know it's got physics kinematic and the move speed here which is set to Y which is Y15 or Y25 which is correct and then save it if you don't do this step what will be spawned is the old object and not the new object i've made this mistake when spawning objects multiple times so hopefully now you won't have to when you notice the spawning object going in the wrong direction just remember did you copy that object did you go through these steps now another important step to do and here i can see i totally forgot about it but at the very start you want to set the affected asset, in this case, to the character. This will help save on processing time in the future. If you set affected asset to all, then that object is looking for all objects that it collides into to remember to do any kind of if collide or if pay attention or just relay that information in your game. But in this particular case, it's just a shooting ball trying to hit the character. So the only affected asset is character. So I can set it to character and that will help save on processing in the future. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the Spiro D Blue Go Ball on the Z axis. Check that, change that to character. 
And at this time, I actually just go through any objects that I know are going to hit the character and make sure that is set accordingly as well. Here I have a purple ball that is moving, set this one to character. Here I have something called the X Purple Cube, X Purple Cube, which is not set to character. See all these little things slowing my phone down. And if your gameplay is slowed down, then people are just gonna not like it and not play it. The very last thing you wanna do is remove the object. This seems kinda silly because now that the balls are gone, you think you wouldn't have to worry about it, but they're still in the background taking up space, memory, CPU usage, and you want to delete that. And that is easy enough to do by simply adding a delay node and a remove node. Now the delay node is set to 10 seconds. To be fair, I have no idea what this reset button does. I wish there was build box documentation. I set it to 10 seconds, 1001, 1002. So I could maybe even set it to five seconds. But the point is, is after 10 seconds, it is removed from the processing power and I don't need to worry about it again. All these little pieces will just help make the speed in which you develop games faster, more efficient, and make it more compatible for all players because you're just using less processing power and players want to focus on the game, not why everything is going in slow motion. Let me know your thoughts. How's your development in Billbox 3 coming along? Leave comments below and let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.